This is Game Chat Born, episode 130. Live service games reaches its apex. Oh man. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 130 of Game Chat with Buona. We got a great show lined up for you. My goodness, it's been a minute. I think the last episode, 129, was uh, August 2018. Here we are in the year 2036. I'm just joking. It's it's 2019. It's like every time I got ready to record this show, man, it's like the forces of evil just showed up and just destroyed everything. Like even tonight, I I wanted to, I wanted to record it. I really wanted to record the show. All right. I I just really wanted to record the show. Adobe's like, nah, man, you're not going to record the show. We're just going to spend all day updating Adobe Audition. So... (sighs) We're just going to spend all day updating. And then it finally updated. And then Adobe Audition is like, hey, Buona, you don't have a microphone. I'm like, yeah, I do. It's like, no, you don't. Anyway, got a great show lined up for Game Chat with Buona. We're back, I think. Let's do it. It's like riding a bike, man. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> got to remember how to podcast. Anyway, for our first story, we're going to talk about EVE Online. EVE Online is probably one of the oldest space games that are that's still going strong in terms of an MMORPG. It's been around since around the time when World of Warcraft came out. I mean, they, they've been neck and neck with World of Warcraft in terms of anniversaries. I think it was 2003, 2002. It's been a, a very long time. But EVE Online has been very, very popular with uh, numbers, you know, like the biggest battles and you know, $10 billion worth of ships destroyed in the latest fight. But I got to say, uh, for the past few months, it's been a little bit dry. The story I'm, I'm talking about <clears throat> is via Rock, Paper, Shotgun. And EVE Online is actually promoting a 10,000 player deathmatch. So uh, I'm a little bit concerned about this. They're, I think they're going for a Guinness World Record. Uh, The article starts out talking about their previous numbers, like uh, 6,142. That's the current Guinness World Record for the most players involved in a single fight. So they're actually pushing for 10,000. This this is the problem I have with this. Okay. The problem I have with this is that most of these previous fights, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, were organically created by the players. I mean, there's maybe some conspiracy theories about how CCP may have kind of helped it happen. I don't know. But these were all created by the players because EVE Online prides itself with player-generated content, you know, emergent emergent content. So these things just happen with the players. This seems very forced. And, you know, just to, just to quadruple that, you know, EVE or CCP, the company that owns EVE Online, they were recently purchased... By Pearl Abyss, these are the guys famously known in the West for Black Desert Online and also known for doing some shady stuff sometimes when it comes to microtransactions and, you know, pay to win type of stuff that creeps into to Black Desert Online like every two months. And they have to the player base has to like beat it down with a bat. So they got that looming over their shoulders. They got that looming over their head, this big giant cloud of of Pearl Abyss. And now they're kind of forcing this fight It's just like a. I, I, I don't even want to be a part of it. It just feels like it's synthetic. You know, I don't even play Eve anymore. I, I've been away from it for probably a good, you know, a, a long time. It's been a really long time. I want to say two years. I started playing it in 2012. I'm not a bitter vet. I'm nowhere near that. Those guys are 10 plus years. I'm nowhere near that. But I don't even play anymore. A 10,000 player fight that they're just going to just going to put together. It just goes against everything they've done so far. I don't know what's going on uh, at CCP. I haven't been following the news very, very closely other than the, the whole Pearl Abyss story. But this, to me, doesn't look good at all. This looks very, very desperate. It's very, it looks very forced. And uh, I don't know how to feel other than, you know, a little bit. I, I'm, I'm making a frowny face. You can't see my face right now, but I'm like, Egh. it's a frowny face. Check it out, guys. Over Rock, Paper, Shotgun, they got the details. Aether Wars, which is coming on March 20th, by the way. 
March 20th. Uh, and if you want to join the festivities, they have a link to sign up at the bottom of this article. I'm not. Doing, I, I don't I don't have any plans to do it. I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it because maybe I'll learn something new between now and then that may that may entice me to do it. But as it stands right now, I really don't want to do it. It just seems very forced. Check it out, guys. The story is over there. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Apex Legends. I haven't had the pleasure of talking about this on Game Chat with Buona, but I have done some videos over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Buona. I played it on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Buona as well. Apex Legends came like a mighty force, man. This 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 game just like just destroyed the norm when it came to battle royale games. The article I'm talking about now is over on Venture Beat that Apex Legends has passed 50 million players in a month. Yeah, that's that's, that's kind of crazy. And to put it in perspective, they they did a smart thing. They compared it to the other juggernaut in the room that is their number one competition. That's Fortnite. Fortnite took the world by storm. And, you know, in a similar fashion to what Apex did, because it, nobody saw it coming. It just like whew, it was like a big whirlwind. But this one was actually more swift. A tweet by Daniel Ahmad kind of puts it in perspective. Uh, they, they have a player count based on the time that the game was out. And Apex Legends was out for eight hours and they got one million viewers or one million players. One day, 2.5 million. Three days, 10 million players. One week, 25 million players. Four weeks, 50 million players. Now, to compare that, to compare that with the fine folks over at Fortnite, in two weeks, they got 10 million players. In six weeks, 20 million players. In 11 weeks, they got 30 million. And in 16 weeks, they only got the 45. Only, he says. So, to put it in perspective... Apex Legends got to 50 million in four weeks, and it took Fortnite 16 weeks to get to 45 million. Um, I, uh, I mean, there's no other way to even look at that just to go, wow. It's just like, what else do you say? And um, it's a big difference in philosophies, man. You got like the old guard of Respawn Entertainment. These guys came from Call of Duty. And you got Epic, which is like the new and shiny. I don't know how much of the Unreal Tourney guys and some of the old Epic old old guard is still over there uh, with Fortnite. I don't know. I, I'm not positive. But I can tell you how they're doing development. They do very, very rapid development. They deploy a lot of patches and a lot of changes really, really fast. Really, really fast. And I, I was very, very surprised today. Very surprised to see that. I wasn't surprised. I, was, I, I kind of should have seen it coming. Um, the Apex Legends, they have a different patch philosophy than the guys over at Epic with Fortnite. They have a different patch philosophy. This is what they wrote on their patch notes that came out today, which was their, I think it's their first real big balance patch. This is it. They say, this is how we think about live balance at Respawn. TLDR, we make less frequent, better tested, high impact changes, balance changes, in order to minimize the impacts on your time spent mastering the game. What a novel concept. What a novel concept. Players actually have to take time to master a game. So you're actually giving them time to master what's there before you go and do swift changes and change everything. Wow. And you're actually testing what you're doing before you put it out there. Wow. Double wow. This is nuts. So... Normally, I wouldn't. I would take that with a grain of salt from a company because companies say they test their stuff, but you know, giggle, giggle. It's not always the case. But when it comes to Respawn Entertainment, those guys, their ping system, their notification system, their communication system, they claim they tested that for a month without any voice comms, just to make sure that you can utilize that without using your mic. And you know what? They were right. So when they say they test something thoroughly, I believe them. I actually believe them because the proof is in the pudding. It's delicious chocolate pudding, too. Man, but 50 million players in four months. Who saw this coming? I don't know. I didn't see it coming. Check it out, guys. Over on VentureBeat.com, they got the details. Apex Legends passes 50 million players in a month, and it took Fortnite 16 weeks to get to that same point. And for our next story, we're going to talk about live service Games. This is a, a big topic in the world of video gaming today because these are games that are are released in a in a much different way than games were released in the past. And 
What I mean by that is that these games are constantly updated over time. I play nothing but these games these days. I play Warframe. I play Elite Dangerous. And there's a ton of other games out there that I've, I've dabbled in and out. Most notably, I've been playing Anthem. I played The Division. A ton of games. Destiny, Destiny 2. These are games that are released. And then over time, they have been updated with, uh, with content and patches and, 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 and events and stuff like that. You know, back in the day, live service games were akin to like MMORPGs. We call them subscription games. So those games were monetized via monthly subscriptions and they were kept up to date. So the live service games of old were $15 a month or, you know, in some cases less to, to play these games. MMORPGs, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, the last two of a dying breed of, of these live service MMORPGs. But now shooters are doing this shooters uh counter-strike and overwatch and you know fortnite all these big big shooters that are out there you know rainbow six siege by ubisoft so the reason why i'm talking about this is that the article came out about a, a chart there was a visual chart on the player the top 10 games on steam the player count and it was like a lot it's a very nice video i'll link it in the show notes which shows an animated view of the players the player count and a majority of this list a vast majority of this list are live service games. These are games that are constantly being updated. And they have an article over on VentureBeat, which has a great, great headline. It says, Blockbusters exit, but they come and then go. That is so true. So if you get like a triple A AAA title, let's say um, you get a title like Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4. Excellent game, right? Just high marks across the board. Everybody loves the game. DLC came out. Everybody bought DLC. Then they put the game down. They don't play it anymore. The game's down on Twitch. It's down on YouTube. It's down on Mixer. It's not being it's not being blasted everywhere. So essentially, they took the money from that game, and they're probably going to come up with a sequel or the developer studio is doing something else. So these blockbusters, they come and go. Look at God of War. Look at just most recently Red Dead Redemption. Who's still talking about Red Dead Redemption? I mean, it was like game of the year. It's, all, it's barely been... A month and a half, well, probably been more than that. It's been two months since the Game of the Year awards, you know, have gone by. Nobody's talking about Red Dead Redemption. These are blockbuster games, but they're not being talked about. They're not buzzwords. They're not raking in the cash. And that's what the next headline says. Live service games stick around for years and can even grow over time so you know some of these blockbusters they have these big spikes at launch or a dlc releases and then they just drop off live service games stick around and in some cases i just talked about one in the previous story apex legends it just keeps growing <laughs> they just keep growing look at fortnite look at look at PUBG. and this that was one of the things that was in this graphic PUBG player unknowns battlegrounds was like the top of steam for like forever and that, you know, just even a couple of years ago, that was unheard of. Only Valve's games had to cover the top spot. It was Dota 2. It was Counter-Strike. It was Team Fortress 2. Those were the ones that were the top games. But times have changed. My goodness. Live service games are the future. So that's why we're seeing games like Anthem coming out. That's a live service game. And we're seeing games like Division. So what's different about these new games that are coming out? These guys that are releasing their titles. The big thing is that they're not charging. Okay. The live services of old, the MMORPGs, even, even you know, a couple of years ago, some of these live service games like Destiny 2, you know, were charging for DLC and for the, for the big major stuff. These guys aren't charging. They're monetizing their game through cosmetics or some sort of a season pass to get early access if you're talking about The Division 2. I did a video on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out with the details of the Division 2's monetization plans for 2019 and their game, The Division 2. And Anthem has a year plan of all this free content that you don't have to pay any money for, but they're going to continue to update the game. It's a very risky thing business-wise, but it has been proven to work for a lot of game companies more often than not. I play Warframe and I play Elite Dangerous. Both of those games have been going on for five. Well, yeah, both of them have been going on for five plus years right and they're not charging for a whole lot of stuff warframe is a free-to-play game and they charge for you know currency platinum and, and prime access packs with with different warframes and cosmetics 
Elite Dangerous only charged for their Horizons DLC, which came in year two, and they haven't charged for anything since except for cosmetics and skins. Yet development continues. And they put out a plan. You can check my YouTube channel talking about Elite Dangerous future plans. They put out a plan saying that the next major update isn't coming till 2020. So they're, they, they're funded through that. I mean, they're not counting on... I mean, if you're going to put out a, an announcement that your game's not going to have a major update until 2020, you better have some money to back it up because your player base is going to skedaddle. <laughs> you tell your player base, we're not going to have a major update for, you know, for two years. I'm, I'm, they're out of there. They're, they're going to take a break or they're not going to come back at all. You know, Granite Elite Dangerous is going to have some minor updates in between, blah, blah, blah. You can check out my video where I talk about all that. But still, live updates are king. The future of video games in the next couple of years, I don't know how long this is going to last, is going to be primarily live updates. So single player games, they have got to find creative ways to keep players playing or keep players interested in their game. They don't necessarily have to play the game all the time, but there needs to be some buzz, you know, some positive words of mouth, some some talking about the game and, you know, social media and Steam and 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 Twitch and Mixer and YouTube. These are avenues for that. When there's new content and there's new things to do, people talk about it. If there's not, then it sort of dies down. The game doesn't completely die, but they rely on sales. So it's like traditionally they have a Steam sale or some, some sort of a sale uh, to kind of bring the game back to light. You say, oh, that game, God of War, I never played that. It's on sale for 20 bucks now on the PlayStation 4. Maybe I should try it now. And then there's some buzz going on with the game again. How did the game do? Did it win game of the year? What, what happened? And it's a little bit tougher to, to maintain, or not even maintain, but to get money and sales from that type of a business model. So live service has definitely changed the landscape in terms of what the, what the dominant platform is. Just look at EA. <laughs> I know you're probably like, oh, boy, you said the words. No, seriously, look at EA and their shift to their service called EA Origin Access, right? Origin Premiere. These are services which provide you games over time and it constantly updates. And there, it, it was very apparent with Anthem because they gave all the people who subscribe to their Premiere Access program the best deal on Anthem. You got to play it early. You only had to pay $15. You got the best package. They, they were really promoting that. And if you pre-ordered the best package that they had, if you didn't use their, 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 their service, you didn't get to play. You just had to watch. You, couldn't, you did not get to play. And I was shocked by that. But thinking about it over time, it's like the, the shift has been made. They're prioritizing services and you're going to see more of it i'm predicting you're going to see more of it check it out guys i mean this i'm not talking about the article too much but it kind of prompted the discussion between live service games versus traditional uh traditional environments and traditional models out there check it out guys venture b has the article but what do you guys think let me know what you think about this whole live service thing sometimes it rubs people the wrong way because uh, you can easily abuse that as a game developer. You can do a lot of nickel and diming to, to kind of make that cash. Or it could be a very good thing because you get an incredible amount of value just by buying the game once and maybe buying a couple skins throughout the year. And you're constantly getting great new content. So check it out, guys. Let me know what you think about that article. And that concludes episode 130 of Game Chat with Buona. We actually did another one. Wow, it feels like forever. It's like once you, you go away for a while, you come back and you do it. It's like cracking an egg and then frying it and then you eat it. That makes no sense at all. Guys, follow my stream, twitch.tv slash Buona. I stream there almost every day. I take very few days off. And even when I'm supposed to take a day off, I'm over there on twitch.tv slash Buona. Follow my YouTube channel youtube.com slash buona i'm posting more and more content we're going to have a surge of content over there to cross promote and to maintain and to grow awareness with our patreon patreon.com slash buona you can go and contribute whatever you want that's going to be my main way of monetizing this show until i can find some sponsors or advertisers patreon.com slash buona so if you enjoy what you hear just just drop a dollar drop five dollars every little bit helps this is how i make my living and you guys make it happen thank you so much i also want to thank my sponsor over at corsair.com go to go.corsair.com slash buona 
I'm probably putting this in the wrong spot in the show because I'm terrible at this right now because I haven't done it. Never mind. Go to that Corsair slash Buona for more deals and uh, you can find some some great stuff from Corsair. And if you click it, if you go through that link, then I get credit for it. So I'll be putting those in the show notes as well. Look for these episodes every Wednesday. We're going to be recording these every Wednesday as much as we can if my software uh, doesn't act up. Also, we're getting a new PC in here soon. Uh, the community did raise funds to get me a new PC. I haven't had to upgrade since 2012. So that has been ordered and is coming in uh, within a week or two. So hopefully the shows will be better quality. I don't know how I'm going to increase the quality with a better PC with a podcast, but <laughs> you know, maybe I'll be able to pump them out faster because we'll be able to you know create the shows a lot quicker. So thank you so much, guys. Game Chat with Boy, episode 130. You guys have a great day, night, morning, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't gonna see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? Um, okay, bye.